Hi, I'm Charlotte Oakley. I have a research degree and I'm a dietitian by profession and lead the Child and Adolescent Eating Disorder team in Greater Glasgow and Clyde. The team who also work very hard on this section of the SIGN guideline are Rachel Smith, Joy Olver, Fiona Duthie and Karen McMahon. And we were all very conscious of the importance of making the correct recommendations based on the best research findings to improve outcomes from the start for eating disorder illnesses, which is in childhood and adolescence. I was also one of the leads of the National Review of Eating Disorders commissioned by the Scottish Government, which in combination with this side guideline publication will enable significant improved outcomes for people in Scotland with eating disorders. I'd like to thank SIGN very much for the amazing they support they have given us throughout the process, which turned out to be a very difficult year um, with the pandemic. The two key questions I'm presenting include what psychological therapies are effective in the treatment of children and young people with anorexia nervosa and the same for bulimia nervosa and binge eating disorder due to the similarities of the literature in bulimia and binge eating disorder they were put together in one key question for the literature search phase. The list of interventions investigated are listed here and with the same for anorexia, bulimia and binge eating disorder. To give some context, the figures for anorexia nervosa, the figures in red, that is, donate the number of papers that, based on the abstracts from the literature searches, went forward to the next stages of analysis. Once the full papers had been analysed, a significant number did not meet criteria or um, had not got the methodological quality required to be utilised within a sign guideline. As we know, there is a significant lack of quality or good quality research within eating disorders, which are notoriously difficult to have high quality methodology around. And this is only exacerbated in the under 18 year old population. Treatment studies compared between therapies um, using treatment as normal or waiting lists as controls. Outcome was, were considered, whereas you might expect, as listed here, with the differences between anorexia and bulimia being related to the diagnostic differences in weight and binge purge behaviours. Moving on to the evidence in key question one for anorexia nervosa, Two meta-analysis met criteria. Fisher's was a Cochrane review of 170 pages, which included 16 randomised control trials, and Zeek with 10 randomised control trials. These included all the high quality randomised control, control trials published and were therefore the predominant papers used for the guideline. The two meta-analysis reported low quality evidence suggesting family therapy was more effective than other treatments in rates of remission and on weight gain. However, family therapies were mostly compared together within the meta-analysis rather than specifically family-based treatment or the MORTI model being compared to individual treatments. Therefore, randomised control trials within the last 10 years in family-based treatment or the MORTI model that had met the methodological criteria to be included in the, the meta-analysis were also analysed separately. So we have Agras in 2014 who investigated FBT against systemic family therapy. They found there was no statistical difference found at the end of treatment or at 12 months follow-up. However, in the FBT group, weight of weight gain was superior at weight at, at eight weeks of treatment and hospital admissions were lower and FBT cost less. In LOC 2010, FBT against adolescent focused therapy found um, FBT was superior to AFT in achieving full remission at six and 12 month follow up. More participants were hospitalised in AFT than FBT. However, the superiority of FBT was not sustained at long term follow up. 
The additional studies included Medway's qualitative analysis and a systematic review of augmentative FBT approaches, which found there was low quality evidence for the utility of augmentative FBT approaches, in particular separate parents and carers only sessions for parents, for patients with families with higher expressed emotion or longer pre-treatment illness duration. Additional parent skill and mealtime focus sessions for patients with lower early weight gain. To set the scene in FBT, seven studies were considered only one rated above two plus, which is a control case control or a cohort study. And Salbach Andre in 2009 was the only one with a one minus rating, which is an RCT but with a high chance of bias. And in that study, there were only 16 patients in, in, treat, in each treatment arm. Um, and of the seven two plus studies, uh, a proportion were a mixed age population, so adolescent and adults, and in, uh, in and out patient settings, and all sample sizes were very small. Therefore, the research was limited. However, Kaluji in 2015 found significantly more adolescents reached BMI goals within 40 weeks of treatment, and Del Grave. Uh, the Italian research group in 2013, 14 and 19 found improvement in weight and psychological outcomes. And these um, improvements were sustained at follow up. And this was in inpatient and outpatient treatment settings. AFT and DBT studies also met criteria, um, but were too small to make recommendations. And additionally, there were a small number of studies of potentially promising psychological therapies for children and young people with anorexia, some of which have been shown to be effective in adults, which do not meet the criteria for inclusion, include, according to the SIGN methodology. So that brings us to the evidence or the recommendation, sorry, based on the evidence. Um, so FPT should be offered. So therefore the strongest recommendation, so would be the first line treatment. Systemic and augmentative FPT could be considered. So a lower level of evidence and therefore of recommendation. And the same for CBT it could be offered based on the lower quality of evidence. Moving on to bulimia nervosa and binge eating disorder, there was one meta-analysis from which there were three randomized control trials in adolescent bulimia nervosa. Lagrange 2007 found FBT for bulimia superior in reducing binge purge abstinence, but with a greater drop in abstinence at six months follow up than in support of psychotherapy. And the same group in 2015 found FBT for bulimia, significantly higher rates of abstinence um, for FBT, but this was not sustained at 12 months follow up. Whereas Stefini, both treatment groups had similar remission rates of 30%. Rates of remission were stable at 12 months follow up with no significant difference between groups at either time point. And in binge eating disorder, Berkman, Tanal and Pete uh, conducted two robust meta-analysis of the binge eating disorder literature and where there was, they found no efficacy based randomized control trials in any therapeutic modality conducted specifically for binge eating disorder in children and young people. Therefore, the review, the review team considered loss of control of eating as it may be more developmentally appropriate for under 18 year olds in this category. In a meta-analysis, Berkman in 2015 identified four randomized control trials for treatment of loss of control in children and adolescents. However, there was insufficient evidence across outcomes to make recommendations. So the recommendations for 
children, young people with bulimia and binge eating disorder in bulimia adolescents could be offered either cognitive behavioral therapy or family-based treatment, um, or with even weaker evidence if cognitive behavioral therapy or family-based treatment were not acceptable, psych psychodynamic therapy could be considered um, for adolescents with bulimia nervosa. Um, in binge eating disorder, there were no randomized control trials present, so recommendations have been made based on first and second line recommendations for adults. So for cognitive behavioral therapy and personal psychotherapy, family-based interventions that could be offered. Finally, further research needs. In anorexia nervosa, research into children with anorexia nervosa. More RCTs completed by a variety of research groups in both FBT and CBT using a variety of psychological therapies as controls. Longer term follow up uh, RCT studies in FBT and CBT. Research into innovative augmentative approaches to FBT to continue to be developed to improve outcomes and re research into the experience of participants being treated in whichever therapy they are undertaking. Um, and in bulimia nervosa and binge eating disorder, significant research is required in both conditions. A high need for RCTs in psychological interventions for children and adolescents with binge eating disorder, both full and sub-threshold, and the need for ongoing development of clinical in interventions for children and adolescents with bulimia and binge eating disorder to improve the current low remission rates within the literature with current recommended therapies. Thank you.